Hello, my name is Cassandra Candia. I'm a senior at Roosevelt University, and the professors involved are Dr. Anayoli, chemistry professor at Roosevelt University, and Dr. Cordero, biology professor at Roosevelt University. And today I'm going to explain to you the phytochemical extractions on medicinal plants. A quick overview of what you'll learn today is the importance of phytochemistry, a little background of the plants used in the research, the two methods, which is the cold extracted method and the hot extracted method, and at the end, a comparison of both methods. The goal for this research is to determine which method will give a better extraction of the product from the medicinal plants that will be used for further testing. So what is phytochemistry? Phytochemistry is the study of chemical compounds derived from plants. The word phyto in Greek means plant, and chemistry is the science of chemical elements and compounds. So you put the two together and you get phytochemistry. But why is it so important? Plants and herbs have been used in traditional medicine for many years to fix stomach bugs and so much more. Now that in modern Medicine, it's been advanced to use to resist against fungi, bacteria, infections, even some cancers. So with phytochemistry, you can produce new drug treatments in human diseases. It's natural compounds and it has nutrients. In my research, I use two plant materials that are within the same genus, meaning these plants are sister plants, but have their own characteristics. The first plant is called Sensiblum sarfera, and the second one is called Sensiblum misolum. You can find both of them in the tropical West Africa area. Both of these plant samples were retrieved in Tanzania by Dr. Cordero, a professor in biology at Roosevelt University. Both have different characteristics, as in one is an anti-inflammatory property, and the other one has properties to treat wounds. The purpose of choosing two plants within the same family is to have a better analysis of the results from the experiments and to have less errors. The first experiment I did is the cold extraction. Let's look into it further. The materials I used for the cold extraction were both plant materials, a blender, filter paper, a flask, and a one-to-one -one ratio mixture of methanol and dichloromethane. The cold extraction process is very easy. For those of you that are coffee drinkers, just think about it as requesting a coffee pour over. And it will make total sense. For those that are not coffee drinkers, let me explain it to you a little further. Each plant material was blended, as you can see here in the picture, and then it was mixed with the solvent that was used of a 50-50 ratio of dichloromethane and methanol, and then it was set aside for seven days to let the extraction really penetrate between the plant and the solvent to remove the wanted products. After seven days of extraction, the filtration process begins. Or for those of you that are coffee drinkers, the pour over process begins. So a filter paper was used to separate the plant material and the liquid, as you can see here in the pictures above, and you can see the, the drainage of the liquid happening. And then it was set aside to let that continue by itself slowly. After the pour over process ended, or the filtration process ended, the liquid and the plant materials were then placed into bowls to dry, as you can see here on the left. The picture on the right is the final product of each extraction after two weeks of fully air drying.
Now that the cold extraction was completed, let's move over to experiment two, the hot extraction. For the materials used, only one plant material was used for the hot extraction due to time limit in the lab. The other materials were a blender, a flask, the soft light extractor, and five solvents being hexane, diethyl ether, dichloromethane, ethyl acetate, and methanol. Before I explain the process, I'm going to explain why the soft light extraction setup is used and why we use five solvents. The soft light extractor is a technique used for hot extraction. As you can see here in the picture, in the bottom flask, it is being heated by a heating plate. Here, it has two valves. The bottom valve is where water enters in the condenser, and the top valve is where the water is removed from the condenser. And in the middle is where the plant material stays. During the hot extraction, five solvents were used, and the solvents go from nonpolar to polar. The solvents used were hexane, diethyl ether, dichloromethane, ethyl acetate, and methanol. The reason we use these solvents were based on their polarity. Having something that's very polar will extract many things, and having something that's nonpolar will only extract its own solvent. Think of it as having a magnet. When you have two magnets of the opposite side, they attract together and they pull closer together. This will be considered your very polar products. When you have two magnets of the same side and you try to put them together, you can feel them pulling away from each other. And that will be your nonpolar solvents. It's very important to use these solvents to see what we can extract from the plant material. Here you can see two videos showing you how the hot extraction works. The hot extraction is run continuously. In the start of the hot extraction, you can see that the solvent methanol is extracting the plant material and giving a very dark green color, which is what we want because this means that the extraction is working. Once the extraction is coming to an end, the solvent then starts to clear up as you can see in the second video. Here are the results of the end of each hot extraction. Each extraction of each solvent was ran between 1 to 4 hours. As we increase from nonpolar to polar, you can see here the differences of colors that were extracted from each solvent. You can see that the most polar solvent, the ethyl acetate, was able to remove much more product. Now, the way to think of a hot extraction is like if you're making tea. When you make tea, you use boiling hot water and you steep the tea bag for three minutes or so. Most of the time, you only use a tea bag once because every time you steep the bag, you will get a different result in strength and color of making the tea. It goes the same way as using hot extractions with five different solvents. Here are the results of the end of each hot extraction. After each extraction was completed, the product was air dried for about a week or until there wasn't any more liquid solution left. On the right, you can see the dried results of each product. After the product was air dried, each bowl of the final product was scraped off and placed into clear valves to get the weight of the final product that was given by using the hot method extraction. Here in the picture to your right, you can see the little plant product that was retrieved from the hot method extraction.
It's time to compare and contrast both methods. The cold extracted method is an easy lab setup. A lot of testing or plant material will be needed to repeat the extraction process. The cold extraction can achieve a robust plant profile and a fuller product. The hot extraction, the soft flat adapter is needed, but one plant material can be used with many solvents at one time. The hot extraction has a higher range of extracting compounds from the plant. One thing about the hot extraction that it can change the chemical structures of the plant. The conclusion. The results have concluded that using both the cold and hot extraction method can lead to great extraction of the products. It all depends on the preference of the research and what exactly the research entails. The cold extraction is more concentrated and the hot extraction removes more compounds that allows to be tested further for the medicinal properties. The future goal is to continue the research and test each of the final product. Testing each product will include research involving microbiology and much more. The purpose of testing the final product from each extraction is to identify the properties of the medicinal plant. Thank you for watching. And special thank you to Dr. Cordero and Dr. Anna Jo for mentoring me in my independent research.